All right, so in this thing, in this lesson, right, we're gonna learn how to solve um, equations and inequalities. So basically, I'm gonna have 15 questions I'm gonna explain to you, and you guys will probably know how to do these questions, right? Some of them are multiple choice, and while some of them are short answered, and I'm gonna show you guys how to bubble it in. If you guys don't know how to bubble in answers on the SAT. So let's begin on question one. If 4x plus 12 is equal to 36, what is the value of x plus 3? So we have 4x plus 12 is equal to 36. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 4. Right? If I divide both sides by 4, 4x divided by 4 is x. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Right? x plus 3. What are they asking for? x plus 3. So what is x plus 3 equal to? It's equal to 36 divided by 4, which is equal to 9. So this question is pretty easy. So that's how we got the first answer. Let's move on. So for question 2, we have 4x plus 13 is equal to 7 minus 2x. What is the value of x? So we have 4x plus 13 is equal to 7 minus 2x. Now I'm going to add 2x on both sides. Right? And I have limited space. So let's make all this work count. Right? Is equal to 7. I'm going to subtract 13 on both sides. So 6x is equal to negative 6. Divide both sides by 6, giving you x is equal to negative 1. Meaning our answer is going to be b. Right? These questions are really easy. So let's move on to a little more challenging one. This one has to deal with all... Um, this deals all with... Uh, coefficients, right, and constants. So, question three. If ax minus b is equal to c minus dx, what is the value of x in terms of a, b, c, and d? So, ax minus b is equal to c minus dx. Now, they're asking for us to evaluate x. So, let's put x's on both sides. I mean, like, on one side. So, we add dx on both sides. This will give us ax plus dx minus b is equal to c. And I'm going to add b on both sides. And that will give me ax plus dx is equal to c plus b. And now what am I going to do? I'm going to factor out the x. So that will give me x times a plus d, right? If we distribute this, you'll get this, is equal to c plus b. Now I'm going to divide both sides by a plus d. And that will give me x is equal to, right, these cancel out, is equal to c plus b over a plus d. So that means our answer is going to be a. Right, this question is really easy. You just have to distribute everything and then put the x's on one side of the equation, and then factor out, and then divide. Right, so this question is really easy. So let's move on to question four. If one third x plus one fourth x plus one sixth x is equal to 12, what is the value of x? So what I'm going to do, right, we have one third x plus one fourth x plus one sixth x is equal to 12. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this whole equation by 12. And we multiply everything here by 12. So what's 12 times one third? That's equal to four x. Right, 1 fourth times 12 is 3x, and 1 six x times 12 is 2x, is equal to 12 times 12, which is 144. And let's combine like times. 4 plus 3 plus 2 is equal to 9, right, 9x is equal to 144. Divide both sides by 9, x will be equal to 16. So that gives us an answer of b. And now let's move on to question 5. So if 17 minus 2, x, 2 root x is equal to 14, what is the value of x? So 17 minus 2 root x is equal to 14. Now, the first step I'm going to do is multiply, subtract 14 on both sides. So this is how you're going to solve all of these equations. You're going to just isolate the value of x, right? So put the x on one side and all those other numbers on the other side. So we multiply, subtract 14 on both sides, so that will give us 3. 17 minus 14 is 3 minus 2x. Two, 2 root x is equal to 14 minus 14, which is 0. Now I'm going to add 2 root x on both sides, right? So these cancel out. So 3 is equal to 2 root x. Divide both sides by 2, right? 3 root 2, I mean 3 over 2 is equal to root x. Square both sides. x is equal to 3 over 2 squared or 9 over 4. Meaning your answer for question 5 is going to be A. All right, let's move on to more questions. All right, this one, question 6, looks a little more challenging, but... I think you guys will be able to do it. So if 32, question 6, if 32 to the a plus b is equal to 16 to the a plus 2b, then a is equal to what? So 32 can be rewritten, all right, so 32 can be rewritten as 2 to the 5th, while 16 can be rewritten, rewritten as 2 to the 4th. So now let's do this, right? 2 to the 5th and 2 to the 4th. And so 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 5 times a plus b is equal to 2 to the 4 times a plus 2b, right? Let's distribute 5a plus 5b is equal to 4a plus 8b, right? 
we distribute this and we distribute this. We can just cancel out the twos, right? So they'll give us this. We're gonna subtract 4a on both sides and add and subtract 5b on both sides. So that'll give me a is equal to 8b minus 5b, which is 3b. So they're asking for what is a equal to? a is equal to 3b. Meaning your answer is going to be c. All right, let's move on to question seven. So question seven, if the average arithmetic mean of 3a and 4b is less than 50 and a is twice b, what is the largest integer value of a? So the average of 3a and 4b is, all right, so 3a plus 4b. All right, so the average, right, 3a plus 4b divided by two because there are two values is less than 50, right? This value is less than 50. And a is equal to is twice b. So a is equal to 2b. So let's plug in the value of 2b for the value of a. So 3 times 2b is 6b. So 6b plus 4b over 2 is less than 50. Right? So now we have this. Um, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. So 6b, I mean, we're going to combine like terms. 6b plus 4b is 10b is less than 2 times 50, which is 100. So b is less than 10. So if b is less than 10, that means that b is probably equal to 9. So b is equal to 9, right? That means a is equal to a is equal to 18. And what is the largest integer greater than 18? That's going to be 19. Meaning your answer is going to be c. Right? That's a logic question and sort of a math question. So question 8. If 1 over a minus b is equal to 5, then a is equal to what? So 1 minus a over b is equal to 5. So let's cross multiply. So 1 is equal to 5a minus 5b. Right, because 5 can be rewritten as 5 over 1, right? 5 is equal to 5 over 1. If you cross multiply, that's how we got 1 is equal to 5a minus 5b. Right, I just distributed 5 times a minus b is 5a minus 5b. So we're asking for what is a equal to. So we have to isolate a. So we add 5b on both sides. So 5b plus 1 is equal to 5a. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So that will give me a is equal to 5b plus 1 over 5. That means your answer is going to be... So 5b divided by 5 is b, and 1 divided by 5 is 1 fifth. That means your answer is going to be c. All right, so these questions are pretty easy. You guys should be able to get along with this. So question 9, if x is equal to 3a plus 7 and y is equal to 9a squared, what is y in terms of x? So 9a squared, so x plus 7 is equal to 3a, right? Because I mean, x minus 7. I subtracted 7 on both sides is equal to 3a, right? Subtract 7 on both sides. In this case, y is equal to 9a squared, right? 9a squared. So if you square this, if x minus 7 squared is equal to 9a squared. So x minus 7 squared is equal to y. So we're asking for what is y in terms of x. Boom, you have it right here, x minus 7 squared, a. So you just have to isolate everything, and then you're going to get the answer. These questions are really easy. If you guys look at how I did them, you guys can do it in less than a few seconds. All right, which of the following is a solution to this equation right here? So we have three absolute value of x plus 1 minus 5 is equal to negative 2. We're going to add 5 on both sides. So that will give us 3 absolute value. 3 times x plus 1 is equal to 3. Divide both sides by 3. x plus 1 is equal to 1. The absolute value of x plus 1 is equal to 1. Therefore, we can set the two equations. Where are the two equations? It's going to be x plus 1 is equal to 1, and x plus 1 is equal to negative 1. Subtract 1 on both sides, x is equal to 0, or subtract 1 on both sides, x is equal to negative 2. So is there a 0? No, there isn't. But there is a negative 2. So that's how we got the answer of A. All right, moving on. So question 11. If x 6x squared minus 7x plus 2 is equal to 0, it is a 0, what is one possible value of x? So what are we going to do? We're probably going to factor this out. So we have 6x squared minus 7x plus 2 is equal to 0. We can factor this out into 3x and 2x, right? Um, Let's see. Minus 2, no. Minus 2, minus 1. So we saw for this, x is equal to 2 over 3, or x is equal to 1 half. So you could plug in neither value. I'm just going to use 1 over 2. So that means our answer is 1 over 2. Right, so that's easy. You just factor and you figure out the values of x. So x is equal to this or that. So that's how we got this. You can either write in 1 half or 2 over 3. It doesn't matter. All right, our next question, question 12. If 6, 7x plus 10 is equal to 44, what is the value of 7x minus 10? 
So 7x plus 10 is equal to 44, right? Subtract 10 on both sides. So 7x is equal to 34. And now they're asking for 7x minus 10. So let's subtract 10 on both sides. If we subtract 10 on both sides, that will give us 7x minus 10 is equal to 34 minus 10, which is 24. 7x minus 10, 7x minus 10, meaning your answer is going to be 24. So let me write that down, 2, 4. All right, let's go to question 13. If 3x plus 4, 3x minus 4 is equal to 9, what is the value of 3x minus 4 squared? So we have 3x minus 4 is equal to 9. We already have 3x minus 4, and now they're asking for 3x minus 4 squared. So in order for this, we just, 3x minus 4 is equal to 9, right? We just square both sides. 3x minus 4 squared, 9 squared. What is 9 squared? It's 81. So that's how we got the answer of 81. 8, 1. Right, this is easy. 3x minus 4 squared, 9 squared. So that question is easy. Let's move on to question 14. So if x to the negative 3 is equal to 1 over 4x, what is one possible value of x? So x to the negative 3, what can that be rewritten as, right? As you guys know, if it's a negative integer, then all you have to do is just put it over 1, right? So 1 over x to the third, right? x to the third, because that's equal to negative x to the negative 3 is equal to 1 over x to the 3. x to the third is equal to 1 over 4x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply. If I cross multiply, that will give me... Right, just cross multiply. That will give me 4x is equal to x to the third. I divide both sides by x. That will give me, right, I'll just put this on this. That will give me 4 is equal to x squared. Square root both sides. x is equal to 2. That means your answer is going to be 2. So we're going to write it like this. All right, now let's go to the last question of this section. All right, question 15. If x squared minus 7x plus 12 times x squared minus 11x plus 24 is equal to 0, what is the val What is one possible value of x? So let's just factor this out, right? Let's factor this first equation out. So x squared minus 7x plus 12. Because any value that will make this equation right here equal to 0, because as you guys know, 0 times any number x is equal to 0, right? It doesn't matter what number. It could be a million, a bajillion. It can be any number. Any number times 0 is equal to 0. So we just have to make this equation equal to 0. So x squared minus 7x plus 12 is equal to 0. We could factor this out into x minus 4 times x minus 3 is equal to 0. Therefore, a value of x that will make this equation equal to 0 is 4 or 3. I just use the value of 4, right? So that means our answer is going to be 4. So these questions are really easy, right? They take around a minute or so to do, or even less than that, and this is all the work. So if you guys know how to do these questions, you guys are set for the SAT and all these problem solving, I mean like these linear equations and just equations in general. So thanks for watching guys and peace out.